All right, good morning everybody. So welcome to day two of Piazzolla Summer. So we're gonna be looking at starting at rehearsal six and ending at rehearsal 11 today. Um, there is a time change at rehearsal 10. Well, you're slowing down poco a poco, the three measures between nine and 10. Um, and it doesn't give us a tempo marking, but I'm gonna say quarter note equals 64 is where we'll get to at 10. And I'm just going to go ahead and do all the recordings starting at quarter note equals 64 right at 9, just for consistency. That's everything. Uh, just go ahead and check the description box for your timestamp and we'll get started. Okay, first violins. So this section here between 6 and 11, most of it is divided, um, a divided staff. So outside would play the top staff, inside would play the bottom. If you're on the outside, you're just holding forever and ever and ever. And Steffi has written in some bow changes, but they are going to be staggered. So for instance, you can see there's a down bow in nine. I'm talking about the outside part here. Um, at rehearsal nine, there's a down bow. And then she's written an up bow kind of in the middle-ish towards the end of measure 54, a measure later. So that just means you're going to stagger the bow throughout this entire thing and make sure that you end on an up bow in 59 so that you can go down again in measure 60. Other than that, I think you guys can handle holding all those notes, so I'm not going to demonstrate that, um, but I will talk about the inside part starting at rehearsal nine. So if you listen to the recording, you can hear that this is kind of a staggered, tiered little harmony here, and you guys happen to be placing your eighth notes on beat four. So in each measure, you're holding one, two, three, off, four, and one, two, three, off, four, and one. So resting on the and of three. And in order to make this bowing work, you're going to have to do a backwards bow lift on each eighth note rest. So for instance, here's measure nine. Hop. Lift. Lift. So each of those separate eighth notes that are marked up bow will be at the frog and then you'll have time to go down. The only time where it gets a little strange is in measure 59. So you've been going, here's 58. So the two notes at the end of measure 59 are going to be at the tip and then things go back to normal in the next measure. So just watch while I'm demonstrating and um, hopefully it'll make sense. And then you just have to keep track of the changing notes and accidentals. Um, I'll point out in measure 58, it goes to a G sharp to a B natural, so low one to high two. That lasts for two measures, and then it goes to B flat, which is written in there as an accidental. Make sure that you realize that that flat lasts all the way through the measure, so the pickup to the next measure, which is tied, is also a B flat, and since it's tied, it's going to stay a B flat, okay? And then it gives you another accidental. I'm talking about measure 61. The last note of measure 61, since it's on a separate bow, it's not tied, they give you another flat, okay? That doesn't mean that the half note before it wasn't also flat, it is. And then it goes back to being natural in 62. Other than the rhythm, I think this section is going to be just fine. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start and I'll place from 6 to 9 with my metronome set at 120. And then I'll move it down to a quarter note equals 64 to play 9 through 11. 2, 3, 4. <laughs> as long as you can remember to do the bow distribution appropriately, this part will be no problem. <laughs> 
All right, happy practicing, and I'll see you back here for the next part in the next video. Okay, second violins. So, six rehearsal six to rehearsal nine is just an extension of what we did yesterday. Copy and paste everything I said from um, five to six. I'm going to go ahead and just that part out of the way first. So I'm going to set my metronome at quarter note equals 120 and play through from six to nine. Two, three. about 9 to 11. Um, this is another part where you've got a divided staff. So outside, inside, outside, play the top staff, inside, play the bottom staff. And um, this part is very different, but the thing that is the same is that you're both entering at the same time with every phrase um, and ending at the same time with every phrase. So if you'll take a look at how the two line up, you've got one and two rest and then you're in on the end of two, and then something happens, three, four, and then you're off um, on beat two of that second measure. So you will be making sound at the same time as your stand partner, just not necessarily the same notes. So let's talk about the top part first. Um, you can hear in the recording, this is kind of a tiered, kind of gentle falling rhythm here. So each section passes it around. So you guys happen to be changing on beat three. So you've got rest and two and three and hold and one and two and three and hold okay so you're always resting like i said on right on beat two and then coming in again on the end of two bow distribution is going to be key here we don't want any of this to stand out um, other than the accents obviously but we want to make sure that we're doing bow distribution in such a way that it's not going to be clumsy or loud when we don't want it to be we want it to be very serene and soft so the best thing that i can see to do is basically a run bunny run bunny type of situation and if you just go back and forth you should be fine so for instance starting at measure nine if you're starting in the lower half <laughs> and then just freeze on the rest and use the tip of the bow for the separate notes. It takes you back, etc. And you can continue that bow distribution uh, the entire way through. So do try to make it all the way to the tip and all the way to the lower half. Articulation wise, also make sure you're trying to put a sting on the tied D each time. Like I said, it's, a, it's something that's being passed between each section. So you need to put a sting on it to make sure that your part stands out where it needs to within that tiered structure. And then other than that, if you're on the outside, all you have to do is keep track of when the notes change, especially if there are accidentals. In measure 58, you get a G sharp, 59 again, and then 60, you get a B flat, 61 again, and then 62 and 63, it goes back to, to B natural. Now, if you're on the inside, you guys are just holding a note through the entire second violin tier. Okay, so if you look in measure nine, you come in on the end of two and you hold through three and four and one, then you're off and then you go the other direction and it's just down and up. Now, since you are entering each time that the second violins as a whole are entering, you're gonna put a sting on your entrance, on your bow changes, so that, again, that second violin tier kind of sticks out of the texture when it's supposed to. Also make sure you don't get lazy and hold through. That rest is there for a reason. It needs to be a clean break and then a nice little sting at the beginning of each um, new tie. And then kind of mirroring the outside parts, you get G sharps in measure 58 and 59, and your rhythm just changed a tiny bit uh, around measure 60, but again, you'll hear that and it's not terribly difficult. It just removes one of the ties. Okay, that's all I wanted to point out. So now I'm going to go ahead and play, um, starting at rehearsal nine, first I'll play the outside part and then the inside part, setting my metronome at quarter note equals 64. Two, three, four, rest, and two. <laughs>
one thing I didn't mention, um, but do play these. Um, I was doing it in third position, but you could also use a fourth finger and put some vibrato on it. Okay, so here's the inside part starting at rehearsal nine. One, two, three, four, rest, and two. <laughs> playing is just make sure that between measures 59 and 60 you're going from a G sharp low one to an A natural regular one. Okay, that's all there is to this section, so I will see you back here next time for the next part. Okay, violas. So, um, starting at rehearsal six, between rehearsal six and rehearsal nine, it's just an extension of what we were doing yesterday. So, um, just copy and paste everything I said for rhythm and articulation and bowing. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly play six through nine, setting my metronome at quarter note equals 120. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, so now let's talk about 9 through 11. So if you can hear on the recording, this is kind of a, uh, a kind of tiered, very gentle section where each part of the orchestra is passing around basically a separate eighth note and then a held note, and it happens on different parts of the measure. So you guys happen to be changing on the and of one. Okay, so even though there's obviously an outside and an inside part, you've got the top staff for the outside, bottom staff for the inside, just like it was earlier. Um, but you're playing, all of the violas will be making sound at the same time, even though you're not doing the exact same notes or bowing. So on the outside, talking about the top staff here, every time you have an eighth rest, so every beat one, you're going to be doing a backwards bow lift to get to the lower half so that you can do your small up bow and then put a sting on your down bow. So it'll look like this, three and four and one. Lift. Lift. Etc. And then if you're on the inside, all you're doing is tying in that eighth note, and your note doesn't change. You're just playing an E, so you would just be going back and forth, three, four, and one. One. Etc. So the only danger if you're on the inside is to accidentally get lazy and play through the rest. So just to make sure you're being really precise, we need the entrance and exit of the viola section to be exactly together, to cut off together and have a clean break, and then a very nice sting at the beginning of the next um, measure, basically. I'm just going to play through the top part. Like I said, inside people, you are just playing a tied E. I think you can handle that. Outside people, I'll just point out you're going along um, E, F natural, and then it changed to F sharp for the last two measures, 62 and 63. Okay, I'm going to set my metronome at quarter note equals 64 and play rehearsal 9 to 11. 3 and 4 and 1. <laughs> Okay, that's it for this section, so I will see you back here in the next video for the next section.
fellows. So we're talking about 6 to 11 today, um, starting with 6 to 9. 6 to 9 is basically um, just an extension of what we were doing yesterday. So copy and paste everything I said. You've got these quarter notes with accents on them, and you're sliding up to the C or the D at the beginning. They're going to be nice and heavy. This is still forte from where it was marked subito forte in 34. So just in the name of consistency, I'm going to go ahead and play through this section first, quarter note equals 120, and then we'll talk about 9 through 11. Two, three, four. section. Now, 9 through 11 um, is pretty much a no-brainer, but I will talk about it briefly. Basically, this is something that is, this theme is kind of being passed around the different sections, so each section starts on a different part of the measure, if that makes sense. It's kind of like a falling, tiered waterfall effect, and you guys happen to start that. You're the only ones um, that play on beat one of every measure and rest on the and of four of every measure. So with that in mind, it's very important that you place these accents exactly together in beat one and cut off exactly in time for that rest on the and of four. You don't want to get lazy and, you know, either elongate the accent, it's just going to be a little sting, and you don't want to get lazy and hold certainly through that rest because that rest is a place where a different section is placing their eighth notes. So just be really mindful and don't go on vacation just because you're playing an A over and over again. Like I said at the beginning, there is a writ here between 9 and 10, but I'm just going to play through it at quarter note equals 64 because that's our goal for the lento section. And other than that, there's a little baby crescendo the last two measures, but um, you're back to subito pianissimo at 11. Okay, so again, in the effort to be consistent, I'm going to go ahead and play through this part, 9 to 11, at quarter note equals 64. challenge yourself to, you know, stay mentally focused on a section like this to make sure that you're really playing it to the best of your ability. Okay, that's it. I will see you back in the next video for the next section. Okay, basses, so a little bit of a break today. Basically from rehearsal six to rehearsal nine, you're just doing the same thing that you were doing from five to six, so copy paste everything I said. This is still really heavy. Um, you had that subito forte at measure 34, and that forte is lasting all the way through. So you're playing really heavy, you've got some accents. Um, if you listen in the recording, rehearsal six is where the soloist starts to quote Vivaldi, and he's by himself, or he or she, is by by himself playing that Vivaldi melody and then you guys interrupt him at the end of 46 with this offbeat kind of sassy little figure right before 7. So it's it's really cool and you really want to bring that out and make sure that it's rhythmically accurate so that um, it really jars the audience out of that traditional classical thing that they get for a couple of measures. So like I said, that's all the same. Then you've got those same slides. Then at rehearsal 9, uh, like I said at the beginning, there is a writ, poco a poco, written between 9 and 10. We're just going to do it um, just quarter note equals 64 starting at rehearsal 9. And then at rehearsal 10, your pizzicato, um, just high A to low A, no big deal. Just make sure you're counting 1 and 2 and. And you'll see that there's a little slur or a tie marking coming off of that second note, that eighth note. That just means you're going to let it ring. Don't um, don't deaden the sound on the string. If that makes, don't mute the string is what I'm trying to say. Other than that, just a nice easy little section for you guys today. So I'm going to go ahead and play through, starting at six. Quarter note equals 120 here. Two, three, four. <laughs> And 
then here's your part at rehearsal 10. Three, four. thing I'll point out other than that is that you do have accents on your lower A, those eighth notes that you're going to let ring, so I would just interpret that as giving a little more sting to those lower notes, which makes sense because, you know, it's Piazzolla and he always wants to put a little accent on the offbeat to make things a little more interesting. Okay, that's all there is to this section, so I will see you back here next time for the next part.